Peroasi, Ecumene, Antipodes, Antuasi. Say goodbye to the flat earth theory. A 2000 year old map correctly shows the location of the Americas, Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia, the Antarctica. A map 1500 years before Christopher Columbus accurately describes the earth. On the left, we have a picture of the globe, 2024 AD. On the right, an ancient Greek map of the globe from 150 BC. Christopher Columbus didn't discover a new world, the Americas. He rediscovered the Americas, which were well known to the ancients under the name Perosis, as this ancient map reveals. So come and watch this video and understand that the ingenuity, the science, and the wisdom of the ancients far surpasses what we understand about them and what we are taught in the universities. And so we say goodbye to the flat earth theory. So let's start this video off with a few points. Point number one, a 2000 year old map that correctly identifies the six continents. Number two, the earth, the world is a globe or a sphere. Number three, the Americas, North, Central, South America, and the Caribbean. This continent was known as Peroasi to the classical Greeks. Number four, the ancient nations correctly mapped the globe. The Mycenaeans, the Minoans, and the Phoenicians, in partnership with the Israelites, successfully sailed the seven seas. Number six, Homer, the Greek poet, was a Hebrew or an Israelite. In classical Greek poetry was based on Near Eastern, Levant, and Mesopotamian culture. Number seven, the ancient charts or maps were used by Columbus and the Portuguese in the age of European discovery. And they followed the paths of ancient navigators in migrations and retrace the steps of ancient nations. The ancient nations possessed practical and theoretical knowledge. Practical knowledge was applied to science and was used in arts such as navigation. Theoretical was considered physics as in understanding atoms and nuclear forces, which the ancients called the super force. This science and knowledge became practical or applied knowledge only in modern times. And number nine, the Portuguese used the maps of Solomon and Hiram that were located in the archives of the Byzantines before the fall of Constantinople. Israel used these maps to travel the world, the Americas, Europe, Greece, Cyprus, Crete, Italy, Spain, Britain, and to the Far East. So shall we begin universal Center for Renovation presents the Biblical 
and historical Israelites. And this video is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. And the brackets are of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. So let us discover or uncover certain things about ancient geography. Or let's rediscover certain things or facts about ancient geography. As the scripture pronounces, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, Hosea 6 and 4, or in this case, lack of geographical knowledge. But the ones, the enlightened ones, the ones who did have knowledge, the nobles of Portugal, of Spain, of England, they had knowledge. They possessed the maps and the charts in this globe, this world globe, that had a map of an area known as Perosi, the Americas, and they knew of the existence of this continent and exactly who resided there as far back as 150 bc the greeks had knowledge of the americas and the image the image on the left is an image of earth and we can see north america central america south america the image on the right we can also see north central and south america under the name perosi the earth is given unto the hands of the wicked if not, where and who is he? Job 9.24 Some people, the global elite, the world elites, they think that knowledge is power. So they have consciously withheld information and knowledge from the masses of mankind or people of the earth to keep them powerless because in their eyes knowledge is power for there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open so the ancient men, nobles and kings, in their wisdom, sought to conceal knowledge, even knowledge of geography. But there was a promise made that this knowledge that was concealed from the public would be brought to the public domain and revealed. So as Luke 8 and 17 in IV prophesied, secret knowledge would be come common knowledge. So let's take this journey of Uncovering and revealing knowledge that was secret. And what is the fundamental purpose or reason behind revealing this long lost secret history that the elite 
kept concealed? Well, the reason is quite simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the reason behind bringing this secret knowledge to light. The year 150 BC, and this is a projection of the earth, an image from the eyes of the men of science in that time, the philosophers, the wise men. And on this image of the earth, we can see the words starting from the upper left, Pyroese. Going to the right, the community, bottom left, Antipodes, bottom right, Antilles, and in the middle, Torrid Zone. The Torrid Zone, also known as the Equator. The equator is a circle of latitude that divides a spheroid, such as Earth, into the northern and southern hemispheres. On Earth, the equator is an imaginary line located at zero degree latitude, about 24,901 miles in circumference, halfway between the North and South Poles. The term can be also used for any other celestial body that is roughly spherical. In the year 150 BC, the Greeks ruled Judea, the Seleucid Empire of the Greeks. This is also the time of the Maccabean Revolt, and this time is also known as the Greek Captivity. And as you will see in the year 2024, this map of the six continents corresponds to that ancient Greek or classical Greek map or globe that was shown previously. The America or Americas is the first continent, then Europe, Asia, Africa. Australia, and Antarctica are the six continents that was visualized in the ancient map or globe from 150 BC. The first place that we can and should go to find out the true nature of the world, the globe, and of the knowledge that the ancients possessed of this world that we all live in is the ancient records of the Hebrews. You can use your translation of preference or you can go to the King James Version Bible 1611 or you can go to the ancient Torah scrolls. This information is contained within these records. The true nature, shape of the world. And we can start with the King James 11 version with 2nd Ezra 6, chapter 6, verse 42. Concerning the continents and the seas and the geography of the earth. Upon the third day, thou meaning the Most High, the Supreme God. Upon the third day, thou didst command the waters, or the seas, right? The waters should be gathered in the seventh part of the earth, commonly known as the seven seas. Six parts, or the six continents, 
Six parts hast thou dried up, earth, six continents, and kept them, to the intent that of these, some being planted of God, and tilled, might serve thee. So, the waters were divided or gathered in seven parts, and the earth in six. So this is a reference to the seven seas and the six continents. And I'm using Wikipedia simply as a teaching tool, as a guide, so we can come to some general agreement for educational purposes. So rather you agree with Wikipedia or not, it's simply a teaching tool so we can all be on the same page. This is the article on the seven C's. We don't have to read the whole article. Just to get the basic idea of and a common agreement on what the seven C's are or is or was. The seven C's is a figurative term for all the C's of the known world. I'm going to skip down to the bottom because we don't have to read everything. Just the parts that gives us all a general idea of the seven seas or the world divided into or the waters divided into seven parts, the seven seas. The term can now also be taken to refer to these seven oceanic bodies of water. And these are the seven oceanic bodies of water, the seven seas. The Arctic Ocean, the North Atlantic Ocean, the South Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the North Pacific Ocean, the South Pacific Ocean, the Southern or an Arctic Ocean. These are the seven seas mentioned in Second Ezra, the seven seas. As previously we mentioned, what were the six continents? So the ancient Hebrews knew of six continents and seven seas. When a nation or people group have knowledge of the seas, then they can go on and explore the seas or the seven seas or the oceans. Marine navigation. Marine navigation is the art and science of steering a ship from a starting point and sailing to a destination efficiently and responsibly. It is an art because of the skill that the navigator must have to avoid the dangers of navigation. And it is a science because it is based on physical, mathematical, oceanographic, cardiographic, astronomical, and other knowledge. So this is a science. This is a knowledge that only few ancient governments possess. But the ones who did possess this knowledge had a knowledge of the world, seas and land masses. History, coastal navigation. And this is the part that the academics push the most, that ancient nations only sailed closely by the coast and never deep sea navigation, which is not true. But this idea of coastal navigation keeps people or students of history blind to the idea that, no, these ancient nations, after the flood of Noah, they charted the world. They mapped out the world. They knew where the continents were and they sailed the seven seas. And let's continue reading this article. History. Coastal navigation was practiced since the most ancient times. The biblical account of the great flood 
where the Norse Ark appears is based both on myths. Now, this is a lie. This is a blinder. To say Nor Ark is a myth is to contain knowledge by having a subjective point of view, a subjective cultural point of view. To Israelites, it's important that their history is true. So Nor Ark is not a myth, it's a history. But to nations who are not Israelite, Gentile groups, this is a myth because their history is going to always come first. Their story is going to always be real. And other people's knowledge or account of history is going to be considered, ah, it's a myth. It's not really real. Uh, our history is true. Their history is not true. We don't consider that real history. So this is why this article is written in a way that's subjective to the reader. For a Jew or Israelite, it's not a myth. It's actual history. To a non-Jew or non-Israelite, uh, it's a myth. We don't know if this happens. This is just what these people are saying. So to continue reading the article, the Noah Ark appears is based on myths and on the navigational practice of the Mesopotamian civilizations. But the article is letting us, the readers, know that from the earliest times, the marine navigation or the science of navigation was known even in Mesopotamian civilizations, which was considered the first civilization on Earth. So from the very beginning or from the time of Noah, navigation or marine navigation was known. And the fact that Noah used an ark, it shows that sailing on oceanic bodies is not an unusual thing. The people who survived the flood built an ark or some type of boat. So marine navigation or the science of navigating is an old science to the Hebrew nation. Ooh, let's continue to read this article. The navigational practice of the Mesopotamian civilizations who from the Sumerians onward navigated their two rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates, and the Persian Gulf. The ancient Egyptians did not limit themselves to inland navigations on the Nile either, and used the Mediterranean sea routes existing since the Neolithic. Okay. So let's try to understand what these guys are trying to say. The Sumerians onward navigated their two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, and the Persian Gulf. Historians and scholars know, once the Sumerians left the Persian Gulf, they sailed to India and also to the Far East, places like the South Sea of China and Malaysia. They omitted that part in this article. It's an historical fact. And this idea of the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, didn't just sail the Nile, but used the Mediterranean Sea routes. The Mediterranean Sea routes would include going to ports like the land of Canaan, Phoenicia, traveling to what today is called Turkey ancient Asia Minor, sailing to Greece, Italy, France, Spain, North Africa. This is what this article is basically trying to convey, but by not actually telling you these particulars, it's concealing truths. 
yes, these people sailed, but we're not going to include the details of where these people actually sailed to. So let's continue with the marine navigation of the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians used the Mediterranean sea routes. So there were sea routes in the Mediterranean. So navigation or marine navigation was considered the norm. And these routes were existing since the Neolithic period. This means that they shared technology, stone building technology, the same stone building techniques that were used in Egypt were used in the Near East, Turkey, Greece, Italy, Spain, France, and Great Britain. Stonehenge was part of this cultural phenomena or shared culture of technology that existed with the ancient nations and marine navigation was a major part of how they shared their technology by sailing to each other's ports and trading goods, services, and ideas. And we have technology being shared by these ancient nations through marine navigations or traveling the oceans. Also, the article continues to bring out metallurgy would have spread for millennia. So metals such as bronze or tin was traded and shared and this technology of metallurgy or working with metals through marine navigation. So this cultural phenomena, as the article declares it, was a shared culture with the ancient nations of the Near East, North Africa, Europe. And as we move further on in this series of videos, India, the Near East, China, and other areas. But it's better to show and explain rather than just make an assertion. So let's continue. The Cretans, which is an island not too far off the coast of Palestine. These are ancient Japhetic people. The Cretans even established a true thalassocracy or a government of the seas attributed to King Minos until the Mycenaean period, 2nd millennium BC, when the events mythologized the Homeric poems ought to be placed. This part is interesting because it states that the Cretans and the Minoans in the Mycenaean period was the time period or the history that the Greek poet Homer was trying to relay. Now, the Mycenaeans were the major navigators of the Near East until the time of the Phoenicians. The Mycenaeans traveled to the Americas. So most of these ancient maps, most of these ancient sea routes were first navigated by the ancient Mycenaeans, Cretans, who were the ancient Greeks. The classical Greeks read about the stories and history of the Mycenaeans. Troy, the Trojan, horse, those are who Homer wrote about. The classical Greeks were a different people group than the Mycenaeans or the Cretans. This is very important in Israelite history and the history of navigation. 
the classical Greeks who invented this globe received their knowledge of geography of the earth from the ancient Greeks, the Mycenaeans and Cretans. The Phoenicians later replaced the Mycenaeans and the Cretans as the major merchant navigators of the ancient world. And King Solomon and Hiram of Tyre, the Phoenicians or Canaanites, made an agreement or a partnership. And they took over the routes that the ancient Mycenaeans, Cretans, used to sell the world. At this point, I'm going to end the video. I'm going to shorten the videos and make more content. So, 1 Kings chapter 9, 26 to 28, King James Version. And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Ezon Geber, which is beside Elab, on the shore of the Red Sea, in the land of Edom. This was to allow King Solomon to navigate into the Persian Gulf and into the Indian Ocean and also down South Africa to the area called the Cape of Good Hope, which in ancient times, so not so ancient times, during the Portuguese period of exploration, it was called the Sea of Storms because it was almost impossible to navigate around Africa, which now, because of what's happening in East Africa and Yemen, ships are forced to sail around South Africa, which in the past, the area was called the Sea of Storms. And this area, the Sea of Storms, is mentioned in the Apocrypha, but that's for a different video soon. Verse 27. And Hiram sent in the navy his servants, shipmen that had knowledge of the seas, marine navigators, who also had knowledge of the seven seas and the six continents, with the servants of Solomon. So these ancient maps were given to Solomon and Hiram or passed on to these kings from the time period of the Cretans and the Mycenaeans who sailed to France, Spain, Britain, and to the Far East, and to America, or the Americas. And they came to Ophir and fetched from this gold 420 tides and brought it to King Solomon. On this map, from 150 BC on the top right Perisi that is Ophir the Americas different kingdoms gave it different names Perisi was the name that the ancient Greeks no the classical Greeks of 150 BC gave to the Americas the same place King Solomon and the Israelites called Ophir, the Americas. This place was well known to the ancient marinas. This conversation shall be continued.